And now, welcome to Seven Questions with Emmy. Brought to you by Timberline Home, whose showroom in Idaho Falls is waiting for you to explore. Hey guys, welcome back to Seven Questions with Emmy. The second season of A Real Bug's Life comes out on Disney Plus in January, and today I'm talking with a real life bug expert. Tim Cockrell has a PhD in tropical insect e- insect ecology from the University of Cambridge, and is obsessed with bugs. Tim, it's so good to talk to you today. It's great to be talking to you, Emmy, and you are absolutely right. I am obsessed with bugs. I find them completely fascinating. <laughs> good. I didn't know if that was too much of a step or not, but... <laughs> <laughs> good. That's good. Are you ready to get started with the questions? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm excited. How did you get involved in a real bug's life? Yeah, so... <clears throat> the people that were making this incredible series of Real Bugs Life, we're trying to tell the stories of all of the bugs that, uh, that are, all of these stories that are going outside in, are going on outside in the real world. Um, and they needed a, a, basically a bug guy to help them tell those stories. So, so I got involved to help them find out which are the best stories to tell, which are the most interesting stories to tell, which are the stories that have never been told before. And we've done all of those things. You know, we've brought brand new things, really, really exciting things to uh, to the screen. So yeah, that's how I got involved. So why do you love bugs so much? Ah, oh, it's really interesting, isn't it? What? So I started out becoming interested in bugs when I was growing up when I was about your age actually and I lived in the northeast of England and we just had a kind of normal garden it's not a, a, a particularly exciting place when it comes to bugs it's not like a tropical rainforest where you've got big huge huge bugs flying around we just got kind of normal sized insects um, but I used to go out into the garden and I had a little book that I would use to identify all of the bugs and I realized that every time I went out into the garden find a brand new bug that I'd never seen before. And so I tried to collect these bugs, but, you know, collect the observations of them and and look at them, find a new one in the the book. And then I go out the next day and there'd be a brand new bug that I'd never seen before doing something interesting. And so I realized that, guy, if I just become interested in bugs, I'll never be bored in my life. And that was 30, over 30 years ago. And I'm still not bored of bugs yet. I'm still finding new things in the garden that I've never seen before. That's cool. Do you have a favorite bug? Mm, okay, yeah. Well, I, so I've got two answers to this question. One of my favorite bugs is a giant praying mantis. Do you have praying mantises where you're from? Have you seen a praying um, mantis? Yeah, I think we have. <clears throat> yeah, so the, so the praying mantis, which is the, a kind of insect, it's got two big, uh, big. Yeah. The, the first pair of legs are, are big, have big spines on them, and they use them to catch other insects out of the sky. They they catch flies and moths and things. And there's a particular kind of praying mantis called the devil's flower mantis. And that lives in the forests of East Africa. And it's the, it has a scientific name as well, which is called I- Idolomantis diabolicum, which is my favorite scientific name. And it's about this big. It's a huge, huge praying mantis. Wow. And it looks like that. You have to Google it after after this because it's the craziest oh. insect you've seen. It's almost as if you got some uh, a, a, an artist to design the craziest insects you could ever imagine. So it's got big projections on its head and it's got kind of leafy bits on its arms. Oh. And when it's threatened, it does this amazing threat display where it tries to pretend to be an animal that's bigger than it itself. And it holds its arms out like this and it's got big eye spots on its wings. So it looks like a, a, a big owl or something, something really wow. dangerous. It's really, really amazing uh, insect. Fascinating thing. But I have a second answer as well. Is that so every every species that is discovered by scientists has a common name um, and it has a scientific name as well in uh, in this this language called Latin, which is not spoken anymore. And there's a species it's on the wall behind me and there's a species called Megaphragma coccorilli. And that's the species that I discovered and is named after me. That's so cool. So that's my other favorite insect. And I discovered it at the top of a tree in a rainforest deep in the jungles of Borneo, about 40 meters high up in the in the rainforest canopy. It's a tiny, tiny insect, less than half a millimeter long. It's one of the smallest animals on planet Earth. So it's uh, that is smaller than a, a, a we call them full stops or a period on a piece of paper. You know, the tiny dot on a piece of paper. It's a smaller, smaller than that. Wow. That's so cool that you discovered it. Mm. What do you think the biggest misconception is that people have about bugs? Yeah. Okay. So, so lots of people think that bugs are very different to us. And in some ways they are, you know, they have six legs and two pairs of wings and antennae and some, some species even have five eyes on the top of their head. So in some ways they are very, very different to, to humans, but at the same time, they're very, very similar to humans. And in fact, all of the bugs that we filmed for this series are real bugs life. 
we filmed insects trying to look after their families or trying to find food or trying to find a nice place to live. And they're all the things that we do too. And so when most people see bugs as these, or many people, lots of people see bugs as these kind of strange, creepy, crawly things, I think just remember that they're just trying to make a living. They're trying to live their lives in the same way as, as we're trying to live our lives. So they're very different to us, but in a, uh, as well, they're very, very similar to us too. Yeah. You've traveled all over the world studying bugs. Do you have a favorite place that you have visited? Oh, it's a really good question. Yeah. The the great thing about bugs is that you can go pretty much anywhere in the world. You yeah. know, whether it's if you if you live in the city, even, you know, you can open the windows. And if you have a, just a plant on, on, your, on your windowsill, you're probably going to find bugs in there. So anywhere you go in the world, there's going to be some interesting bug to, to be seen and some interesting stories doing doing fascinating things. But my favorite place, I think, is the rainforest. So I'm really lucky to have been to the Amazon rainforest and the rainforest in Borneo in Southeast Asia. Um, and it's because the the different bugs that you can see in a rainforest, it, it's like nowhere else on, on planet Earth. So there are really interesting things flying around you all the time, the big moths and beetles, butterflies, and just, just a, a diversity of amazing things. Lots of them are trying to eat you as well. So there are lots of mosquitoes and insects trying to bite you. Um, but that's all part of, the, part of the excitement. Yeah. Do any bugs scare you? Ooh, that's a really good question. Oh, I don't think they do. There are there are some bugs, you know, even the <clears throat> the kind of wasps that people get scared about, you know, wasps or yellow jackets, that kind of thing, where that that can that can sting you. So they scare some people, but the more time I've spent working with bugs, the more I realise that none of the bugs are really out to get you. You know, they, they're, even those bugs that can sting you, they they're just trying to defend their family. You know, they're trying to look after their babies. And so as long as you, those insects that, that can sting, for example, that some people find scary, if you leave them alone, they'll leave you alone. And so I don't think there's anything to be scared of, really. Yeah. What can viewers expect if they watch A Real Bug's Life? So they can expect to, uh, all of those stories that you've seen, if you've ever watched any kind of animal documentary before, where there are those really exciting things happening in really exciting places, you, you can expect to see all of those really fascinating stories. You'll fall in love with some of the bugs. Some of them you'll think of as, as a kind of strange character, but they're interesting nonetheless. Um, and I think you'll, you can expect to see things that you've never seen before. You can expect to see things that you never expected even existed in real life. Um, and you can watch it all knowing that it's not it's not fake, you know, it's not like watching a, an animation or a film. It's all real. You know, we filmed it uh, and filmed real behavior, filmed these insects, these bugs doing really amazing things. Yeah. Thank you so much for talking with me today. That's all right. It's a pleasure. Really nice to talk to you. And I hope you enjoy A Real Bug's Life. I will. And viewers, make sure you watch A Real Bug's Life. It comes out on Disney Plus in January. And are you in it? Is your face shown in it? No, sadly, no. I don't look enough like a bug to be uh, to be in the series. No, I was just oh. behind the scenes when we were filming out there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, new set of questions and interviews are posted every Thursday. Be sure to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Love you guys. Bye. Seven Questions with Emmy, brought to you by Timberline Hope, whose showroom in Idaho Falls is waiting for you to explore.